them. And that was uh, the Crusher and Mad Dog's brother, the Butcher of the Sean. So uh, Aaron Butcher was six foot five, 300 pounds. And uh, he was actually the, uh, what would you say, Jim? He was the lighter of the two. Oh. Mad Dog was really off the wall. And what you saw was what you got with him. Uh, the Butcher. He, he had the better voice by far. <laughs> Especially at about 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So, first of all, happy Father's Day to everybody out there. And, uh, Thank you. You know, a lot of the fathers are out here. I see some of the kids coming in. You told the kids, I'm sure, how the AWA and the rest of them used to be. Yeah. And what it is today. And uh, the personalities that you saw back. In the 60s, 70s, and the 80s is what you got. What you saw in the ring is what you got out of the ring. And there's some tremendous personalities. So we're here to either enjoy some stories, if you like some of those characters, or what they were really like. <laughs> so who's got a question here? Yes, yes sir. How bad of a wrestling was Hulk Hogan when you guys first got him? How bad was he? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I think the talent here helped the Nick guy from all the talent. And when he came here, and I think it was 1982, we had the best talent in professional wrestling in the AWA, and that goes for the, all the 26 territories. And I think Terry Boy, Hulk Hogan, benefited from being here. And shortly thereafter, after being here a year and a half, and, and having the opportunity to work with some of the greatest fellows in the profession. He, in turn, became the Golden Goose, and uh, without him, the WWE would not be what it is today. Mm. Yep. That's right. He was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> he played a heck of a bass guitar, and he was a great guy. I was at Chase Stadium, uh, they had a big man up there, it was Paul Hogan versus Andre the Giant, and the other man that was very successful against Bruce San Martino. And I was still on the card that night, and Hulk had his butt beat pretty bad, and I went out with some friends afterwards, he came back to the hotel, the Marriott Hotel in New York, and all of a sudden I was in this room, and I said, hey man, big man, what's going on? What's wrong? I can't make it wrestle. And I said, well, you really need to come to the AWA, you need some training. And he came, and Jim and I actually worked out with him a lot, were six man tag team matches with them. And, you know, when you get a hold of somebody, we tag them out and grab the arm and twist it, drop the leg on it, tag out. We didn't give him too much exposure, but he really caught on. And, uh, you know, he became a superstar in wrestling. He changed the whole the whole industry when he left the went with the McMahon group. And their philosophy was a lot different than what they had here in the AWA. Here you had to be able to compete, you had to be able to wrestle. And like Jim said, the town here was the best anywhere in the world. Yes? Do you have any memorable ribs? Like pranks? Pranks? Yeah. They always pulled. Ray Stevens was probably the best at pulling pranks, but there was a lot of them. Um, Ray Stevens, one time, we were traveling to Minot, North Dakota, and I went along with Daniels, Ray Stevens, and myself. And Lava La was the driver. Lava had this big suburban. And in the middle of the suburban, up in the front, he had the, the glass holders, the cup holders for the drinks. And Ray was in the back seat, we were, were driving. And I said, he's Ray, you know, it looks so good. He was real pale and dark under the eyes. And Lava said, I don't know what that son of a he's been doing. He's been hanging out at his girlfriend's house. He thinks it's somebody is cheating or she's cheating on him and he's been climbing up this tree and all of a sudden right in front of me goes click 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 and he pulls out a 45 magnum and caps it right between Lago and I and I'm like, oh my god hey put that thing back what's wrong with you and he kept saying people are trying to get me and the race is only trying to get you people are trying to get me so we wrestled in my mountain, we picked Baron up there, and now we have to go to South Dakota. And we got some shotguns in the back because uh, the, the, the name of the people in South Dakota, the, the Kohler, Taylor, he, he owned a big restaurant there and grocery stores, and they're taking us all cousin honey. And Ray's having a drink now, they've got the, the, 
fight the tiger side, the drink and the drinks, and, and Grace telling the story about his friend, his girlfriend Mary, and he said, she's cheating on him. Um, people are after me, and people are just going on and on until we got to have these South Dakota. So Aaron and Mom said, well, uh, we're not staying with them tonight. We need to stay with you. <laughs> so we get in the room and he said a few drinks and he gets in his bed and he's, he's said to me, he starts naked. He pops his 45 name and puts it under his pillow. And I said, Where are you going? He said, well, people are trying to get me. I said, they're not going to find you in Aberdeen, South Dakota. So anyhow, the tweet goes off and I wake up and have to go to the restroom and I hear Ray snoring over there. I go in the restroom and I'm going, hmm. I make a little noise in here. When I come out, is Ray going to think that somebody broke in here and he's going to blow my head off of that 45 angle? And I listen and I don't hear much. I don't hear anything. So I come creeping out of my room like this. And Amway, he rolled down on the floor. And as I walk back by him, he goes, bang! <laughs> so he set me up for this whole thing the whole trip. And I remember before I had to sleep till five thirty the next morning. <laughs> Most of the kind of, they set you up for days for these jokes they play on you. Anybody else have anything? Uh, favorite rivalry and uh, most underrated. Well, we had some great rivalries with um, Pat Patterson, Ray Stevens, Bob Winkle, and a couple of different uh, partners. Bobby Heenan was always incredible to me. I think Bobby Heenan was the greatest uh, talent all around in pro wrestling during our time because he could do anything and everything. And he was great on the microphone. Uh, he went out when I was in the WWE, he went out with four or five different guys a night, and he was just incredible. His timing was great, and uh, I want to move back to the AWA again as far as talent. I mean, it was incredible talent. There was so many good help. I forgot the rest of your question. Well, the biggest rivalry, the greatest matches we had were with Nick Bach, the greatest team, the greatest team. That combination lasted in the with Ian in there. But probably the biggest slide was according to the promoters around the and I was just even true. And we, Adrian was phenomenal in the ring, absolutely phenomenal. Without Adrian, I don't know if Jesse would have ever got to the point he would. He was a great talker, but he couldn't perform in the ring the way Adrian was. We got tired of wrestling at that time. That's what the promoters apparently the people wanted to see a lot. But there was a lot of great rivalries, but like Jim said, we had, we had probably one of the best matches we ever had was with Rick Martel and Tito Santana at the Cop House in San Francisco. Um, we, we got complimented by all our peers when we came out of the ring that it was the greatest match they'd ever seen. And that was really the cover. And the Cop House was a big building, it's empty, and as we walked out, I mean, we're good guys, we're good guys. And the people are doing this and going, P.S., P.S., you know, they don't want to see it. And 18, 18 minutes into the match, they're standing, and, and we went about 35, 40 minutes with them, and it was just, had the people up and down and up and down, and just, it was phenomenal. But again, it comes down to the talent. And uh, we were pretty talented. <laughs> 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 I, I just stopped doing this thing. I found a clip when I was looking on YouTube. So you, here. you and uh, uh, well, and one tagged against uh, Bret Hart. That was one of those amazing matches you in, in Hawaii. And really? You were tag teaming, and it was against Bret Hart, and I can't remember who the other person was. Bret Hart before the WWE. And uh, you sure it was Jim and Brian Blair? Hmm? I don't think it was Bret Hart. This, this was uh, pre WWE and. Uh, uh, Zoom Hall was your partner, and then Conley in wrestling, and it was amazing. Oh, I remember. 
What do we have back here? Yeah. 
Yeah. They hated each other. Yeah. Yeah. Rude and Milwaukee went into the wrestling indication match. You know, we're walking down the hallway, going back to our locker room. Here's pressure over here, and he's drinking a pint of whiskey. We go down here, bad us. Pint of whiskey. We look at this too, we better go watch this thing. We go to the Milwaukee Arena, and we go out there, and uh, Mad Dog gets in the ring first. There's a stage up there that was standing around with some of the policemen. And, and here comes Crusher down, and they're going mad dog, he's doing that jump around the ring. Here comes the Crusher, and the people are going crazy, and he steps in the ring, mad dog slams the door on his head, yeah. busts him wide open. Oh. Yeah. And he starts beating the crap out of him. And the people are going crazy. They start climbing out the cage. And mad dog, he sees them. Yeah. And he takes off, and he hit the ropes in the cage. Lying off. <laughs> <laughs> Three rows back, they're catching him. Then he hit the other side, and then that side, and then over to there. And this went on for about two minutes, and people were just flying here and there. Well, we're, we're dying laughing, but the police are supposed to be helping them clear up the last their butts off. <laughs> well, that was a rivalry. Those two just didn't like each other. I have one quick story about Mad Dog this time. I'm wrestling him in Denver, Colorado, and I'm scared to death. I get in the ring, he looks at me, and I'm looking at him, and he's very unpredictable in the ring. So we tie up, he pulls me into the corner, and he hits me, I reverse him, and I hit him, and he said, harder! So I hit him again a little harder, and he said, harder! So I hit him pretty hard, and then I did, I hit him right on the button on the chin, and he, he went down to the last, Turned on and popped back up, shook his head, poked me in the eye, <laughs> stuck his finger in my mouth, and dragged me across the ring and threw me out onto the floor. I land on the back, on my back, and I'm looking up, all of a sudden I see a shadow, and he jumped from the apron, both of his feet on my chest, and I lost all here in my body, and then when he threw me back into the ring, he said, not that hard. <laughs> I think we better get to the movie here. We can talk all night and tell some great stories, but uh, this is from 1974, starring Ed Asner, Vern Gagne, Billy Robinson, and a cast of characters. You can recognize a lot of these old favorites from the AWA. And if you have any questions about the history of professional wrestling, nobody in the world knows it better than that guy right there, George Steyer. Work. You should be. But if you're already ready for the movie, 